Hello learners, welcome to this course on Embedded System Design using PIC 16FA77 microcontroller. In this tutorial, I will be discussing about how to interface a 16 cross 2 LCD with PIC 16FA77 microcontroller. First, let us start with the fundamentals of 16 cross 2 LCD. So, 16 cross 2 represents we have two rows and in each row, we can display 16 characters. So that is why the name 16 cross 2. We have two rows in each row. It can be used for displaying 16 characters. LCD stands for liquid crystal display. It is made up of liquid crystals. Upon applying a voltage, the liquid crystals will orient in certain directions. So, thereby a particular character can be formed on this liquid crystals. So, these LCDs are replacing LEDs due to the declining prices of the LCDs and its ability to display numbers, characters and graphics. And also there is an improvement in LCD by incorporating a refreshing controller into the LCD itself. Earlier, a CPU has to refresh the data in the LCD. So, it will not be able to do any other job. But now, we have LCDs with refreshing controllers. So, thereby the refreshing of the data will be taken care by the controller inbuilt into the LCD. Just as other CPU can just send the data for displaying it on the LCD. And it also eases the programming for characters and graphics. So now let us look at the pin details of 16 cross 2 LCD. It has 16 pins. So the first pin is a ground line. Second pin is a supply line, VCC. And the third pin is for contrast adjustment. So this each character in the LCD is made up of pixels. It is made up of pixels and this pixel gray levels can be adjusted. So, this adjustment can be done with the help of this contrast adjustment pin. So, we can connect a potentiometer to this pin. So, thereby by adjusting the voltage to the pin, I can adjust the gray level of the pixels. So, then we have three control lines RS, RW bar and enable. So, RS stands for register select. So, we have two registers inside your LCD. One is command register, another one is a data register. Both are 8-bit registers. Command register and data register are 8-bit registers. So, the command register is used to hold the commands like in which row we have to put the character. If it is a first row, in which position we have to put the character. Whether we require a cursor or not. Whether the cursor should be off or on or it is in a blinking state. So, this and all it is a command given by the CPU. So, those commands will reside in this command register. Whereas the character to be printed, for example, hello, H E L L O. So for each character, a corresponding ASCII value needs to be sent by the CPU. So that ASCII value will go to this data register. So here the data register contains the character to be printed on the LCD. So the command register holds the command like in which row which position, whether cursor is required or not, whether I want to clear the buffer or not. So, such information resides in the command register and the data to be printed, the ASCII value of the character resides on the data register. So, in order to differentiate this, because both the data, both the command and data is going to come through this D0 to D7. So, in order to differentiate whether it is a command or a data, we make use of this register select line. So, this register select line, if it is equal to 0, then whatever coming through this D0 to D7 will be considered as a command. If RS is equal to 1, then the D0 to D7 will be treated as data and it will go to the data register of the LCD. So, this RS is a register select for selecting the register and to put the data from D0 to D7 onto either command register or data register. So, RS0 represents command register, RS1 represents data register. Then we have a RW bar, read or write operation. 
So for a CPU, the LCD is an output device. So it is always going to write a data. So it can send the data into the LCD. That is write operation. It can also do a reading process. So reading of the status flag, busy flag in the LCD. Whether the LCD is ready to accept the data. So that is indicated by the busy flag. If the busy flag is one, which means the LCD is not ready for accepting data. So it will help the CPU to decide. So it will wait for some time until the busy flag goes to zero. So then it will start sending the data again. Okay. So for that it can make use of this read operation. Then another pin termed as enable pin to indicate we have a valid data on this D0 to D7 and RS, RW bar lines. So as soon as the data is put onto this D0 to D7, RS and RW bar, an enable line can be generated, an enable signal can be generated by the CPU. So this signal will be a high to low pulse. So a high to low pulse indicates a valid data is available on this D0 to D7, RS and RW bar. Then these values can be latched and depending upon the RS, it can either go to command register or data register. So D0 to D7, as I said, it carries both the command as well as the data from the CPU. Then we have two more pins, which is backlight plus and minus. So we have LCDs in different colors like yellow, white, green, blue, etc. So we have a small LED on the LCD. So this LED should be powered up to get that color. So for that, we make use of this backlight plus and minus. So we connect it to a power supply. So as I said earlier, we have different commands can be sent. So that is shown in the table. If I send a value of 0x01, which means it's clear display screen. 0x04 means decrement the cursor. 0x06 means increment the cursor. 0x05 means shift display right. So a character can move towards right by one position. Same way 0x07 means shift display left. 0x08 display of cursor off, 0x08 display of cursor on, 0x0c display on cursor off, 0x0e or 0x0f is display on, cursor is in the blinking state. And each position in this LCD has an address. So if it is a 2, 16 cross 2 LCD, so the beginning of the first line, the first character will be 0x80, it's a position address. Same way, the last position in the first row will be 0x8f. And the second row, first position is indicated by 0xc0. Last position will be 0xcf. We can also have a 4 cross, uh, 16 cross 4 LCD. In that case, I have a third row and fourth row. So third row will start with 0x90. Fourth row will start with 0xd0. And 0x02 for home. So here I show different types of LCDs like 16 cross 2 LCD, starting addresses 80, it ends with 8F, second row first position is C0 and ends with CM. This is an address for a particular position in the LCD. Same way if it is a 20 cross 1, 80 to 93, 20 cross 2 it is 80 to 93 on the first row, C0 to D3 on the second row. For 20 cross 4, 80 to 93 in the first row, C0 to D3 on the second row. 9-4 to A7 on the third row, D4 to E7 on the fourth row. For 40 cross 2 LCD, we have two rows and in each row we can display 40 characters. So the first row starts with 8-0 to A7, second row starts with C0 to E7. So there are two ways in which we can display the characters onto the LCD. One is the CPU can send the data, assuming that this data has been printed by the LCD. That is one option. Second option is the CPU can check the busy flag. So busy flag is nothing but the D7 th bit of your command register. So here in command register, I have the D7 th bit. So this D7 th bit will be taken as a busy flag. So the CPU can check this flag. It can read that flag by applying RW bar to be 1 and the enable signal to be low to high pulse. Then by seeing this busy flag, if it is 1, then the CPU needs to wait for some more time. 
If the busy flag is zero, then the LCD is ready to accept the data, thereby the data can be sent by the CPU. So here I show the ASCII chart for each numbers, alphabets, capital alphabets and small alphabets, symbols, we have the corresponding ASCII values. For example, for A, the ASCII value is 65. So we need to convert this 65 into binary value and this binary value should be sent to the LCD for printing capital A. If I want to print the 0, then 48 should be sent. It should be converted into a binary value and it should be sent to the LCD for display. So this is how an LCD accepts the data in ASCII format and it tries to put the data onto its display. So now let us go and interface a 16 cross 2 LCD with PIC 16 fa 77 microcontroller. So now for this we are going to use Micro C Pro for PIC as a IDE integrated development environment where we will be writing our program, converting this program into a hexadecimal file. Then we make use of a Proteasi professional as a simulator where we build the circuit, put that hexadecimal file onto the memory of your microcontroller, then we try to execute it and see whether our program is working properly or not. So the interfacing part, we can configure the LCD in two modes, one is 8-bit mode or in a 4-bit mode. So 8-bit mode, we make use of D0 to D7 completely. The data, 8-bit data, 8-bit command or 8-bit ASCII value will be sent as it is. Whereas in a 4-bit mode, we, we need to break this 8-bit into two 4-bits, two nibbles. And we can send first the lower nibble and the upper nibble. So here, the data transmission will be little bit slow in a 4-bit mode, but the important advantage is we are reducing the number of I.O. pins usage in our microcontroller. So here we take a PIC 16FA77 microcontroller connected with the 16 cross 2 LCD in a 4-bit mode. So I am going to connect RD4, OD. RD4, RD5, RD6, RD7 to D4, D5, D6, D7 of LCD. So D0 to D3 we are not going to use it, so we are going to ground it. Then we have two control lines, RS is connected to RD2 and enable is connected to RD3. RW bar line we are going to ground it, assuming that we are going to send the data to the LCD and assume it is going to get printed without any problem. So we are not going to do any read operation that is why RW bar will be grounded. So which means write operation will be performed by the microcontroller. So now let us go and build the circuit then create a program then try to convert that program into hexadecimal file put that hexadecimal file into the microcontroller to see whether our logic is working properly or not. So first let us create a circuit using Proteus 8 Professional. So let us open a new project, select a location for the project, so I am going to put LCD, so in this folder I am going to put the project, give a name for the project, so LCD. So here two things we are doing, one is selecting the location for our project and giving a name for our project. This next, we have to select a schematic of certain size, I am going to use a default schematic. Press next, we are not going to create any PCB layout, so I am going to leave it as it is. We are not going to use any firmware, press next. So only schematic is selected, press finish to come out. So this is the schematic position where we are going to build our circuit. So now let us go to components mode. So in components mode, we have to select all the components required for our project. So I go to this P for pick devices, click on it, 
you will get this window here i can select for the components so pick 16 f8 double 7 so microcontroller its features are shown its in detail is shown here pcb layout is shown here so double click on it it will get added to your list then i require a 16 cross 2 lcd so i type lcd so here you can see multiple types of lcds we are going to use 16 cross 2 lcd 16 cross 2 alpha numeric lcd when i click on it you will see the pin details and its pcb connection so double click on it it will get added to your list then i require crystal select the crystal double click gets added then i require a capacitor select the capacitor double click on it then i require a resistor select it double click on it it gets added to the list then i require a switch select the switch double click on it it gets added so these are the components i require i require a microcontroller crystal capacitor resistor switch and a 16 cross 2 lcd so once we have selected all the components i can press ok and come out of this window now let us make use of the selected components first i am going to take pic 16 fa 7 microcontroller put it onto my circuit so now let us place the lcd onto the circuit so we know that rd4 i want to connect it to d4 rd5 I want to connect it to D5, RD6, I want to connect it to D6, RD7, I want to connect it to D7. So D0 to D3, we are not going to use it, so we can ground it. So go to the terminals mode, select ground, place it onto your circuit, then connect it to ground, D0 to D3. Then we are going to connect RS and enable to RD2 and RD3. So RS, I am going to connect it to RD2 and enable, I am going to connect it to RD3. Since the CPU is going to write the data onto the LCD, we can connect this RW bar to ground. Same way supply VSS is a ground line which can be connected to ground. VEE, we can connect it to a potentiometer. So potentiometer, by tuning the potentiometer, we can adjust the contrast for the LCD. So now I am going to connect it to ground, this line for contrast adjustment, which means I am going to have a high contrast. So if I connect it to ground, we are going to have a high contrast. If it is connected to supply, we will have a low contrast. In simulation, we will not be able to see this contrast adjustment. In hardware, you can able to visualize the contrast adjustment in simulation part we can't see it so i'm going to directly ground it which means i'm going to have a high contrast then i'm going to select a power and it should be connected to your vdd so this completes the interfacing of your lcd with microcontroller still we have to connect the oscillator circuit and the reset circuit so for that I again I go to command component board, select the crystal, I am going to rotate the crystal, place it onto our circuit. So connect the crystal to oscillator 1 pin which is pin number 13 and another end of the crystal to pin number 14. Then connect the capacitors to the oscillator to produce the stable frequency. So I connect the capacitors to two ends of the crystal. Other ends of the capacitor we need to ground it. Again go to terminals mode, select ground, place it onto your circuit and then connect it to ground. So we need to select the oscillator frequency. For selecting the oscillator frequency, 
right click on that component edit properties i am going to use 10 megahertz select 10 megahertz press ok same way the capacitor values needs to be either 33 picofarad or 22 picofarad so i right click on it edit properties change the value so i am going to put it as 33 picofarad same way for the other capacitor also i am going to change the value 33 picofarad so now we have done with the oscillator circuit now we have to build the reset circuit so go to components mode select the switch I am going to rotate the switch, place it onto our circuit, take a resistor, place it onto the circuit, connect one end of the resistor with the switch, one end of the resistor, another end of the resistor connected to ground, uh, sorry supply, connected to the supply, other end of the switch connected to ground. Now the intermediate point between the switch and the resistor can be connected to the MCLR pin which is the reset pin which is an active low signal. So by default what happens this pin will be at logic 5 volt so our microcontroller will not be in a reset state but as soon as I close the switch what will happen the current will flow towards the ground so this terminal MCLR pin will go to logic 0 which means it will reset your microcontroller. So let us remove the switch. So that is what we do in our circuit part. So we have put the oscillator circuit, we have put the reset circuit and also we have interfaced the LCD with your microcontroller. So we have done with the circuit connections. Now let us go and build the program in micro C Pro for PIC. Let us save the project. Now let us go to the micro C Pro for PIC. So here first I create a project, new project, standard project. So again here also you have to select the location of your project. So I am going to put it onto this micro C folder. Give a name for the project. So I am going to give it as LCD. Select the microcontroller IC. You have lot of options here. We are working with PIC 16 fa double sound microcontroller. So select that IC and the oscillator frequency. In hardware we have used 10 MHz. So I am going to select 10 MHz. So four things we are doing here. One is select a project location, give a name for project, select the microcontroller and select the oscillator frequency. Press next. We don't have files right now. So I am going to give, leave it as it is. Press finish. So this is the location where we are going to put our code. So now let us, let me take the code which I have created earlier. I will copy this and put it onto our window. So now let me explain the code. So before explaining, let us save the file lcd.c. Save it. It got saved. Here you can see in the project manager, the project name is lcd and in the source file you can see it is lcd.c is the file. So first we do the configuration part. So our lcd rs is connected to rd2 pin of your microcontroller. Same way enable pin is connected to rd3, d4 pin is connected to rd4, d5 is connected to d5. D6 is connected to RD6, D7 is connected to RD7. Then in order to make this pins to be in output mode, we use this set of statements. So for RS, the corresponding bit is TRIS D2. Same way for enable, the corresponding bit is TRIS D3. So TRIS D stands for the data direction register. By setting a value of 0, the particular pin will be set to output pin. If I put it 1, then it will be set to input pin. So this statement will take care of setting a 0 to the corresponding TRISD bits, which is for making the 4D pins as an output pin. Then I am declaring two arrays, text1 and text2 character arrays. So in both the 
arrays, I am going to put some text. Pick micro programming. Then I take a variable i, character variable i. Then we start with our main program. So first we do the initialization part. So in initialization, what we need to do is we have to specify what type of LCD it is. So we have multiple types, 16 cross 2, 40 cross 1, 40 cross 2. I think we have different versions of LCDs are available. So and which position we are going to display buffer we can clear. So such type of initialization needs to be done before sending a data onto the LCD. So we do the initialization part by using this library function. So which will initialize your LCD. Then I am going to send some commands like LCD underscore clear which means I am going to clear all the buffer register. Then underscore LCD underscore cursor off for removing the cursor. So we can send some commands using this LCD underscore command function. In order to send the data, we make use of this LCD underscore out function. So which specifies 1 comma 3. 1 comma 3 indicates first row, third position. From first row, third position, I am going to print it text one. So text one is pick micro. So this LCD underscore out is something like an auto increment mode. When the first character is printed, then the position will be automatically incremented to the next position. Then the next character will be printed on that position. So it is in an auto increment mode. Then again I am going to use 2 comma 2, second row, second position. We are going to start with the second array for printing, programming. In order to visualize this output, we retain this output for some 2 seconds. Then afterwards we clear the display. Again, I am going to put some other text here using LCD underscore out, 1 comma 3. First row, third position, I am going to put it as embedded C. LCD underscore out, 2 comma 2, LCD interface. And again, in order to visualize the output, we retain the value for some 2 seconds. Now we are going to do a small shifting operation of this text. Embedded C, LCD interface, we are going to do a shifting operation. So that is done using the while loop. Inside the while loop, I define two for loops. One for loop for doing the shifting of left. Another for loop for shift right operation. So I am going to do it for i equal to 0 to i less than 8, which means i will change from 0 to 7. So 8 times we are going to make a shifting towards left. After this, again, Eight times we are going to shift the characters on the LCD towards the right. So since this is in a while loop, so the text will start moving towards left eight times. Then again it will move, come towards right for eight times. Again it will move towards left for eight times. So like that it keeps on oscillating in the display. So in order for this library functions to work, LCD initialization, command, out we need to include the library of LCD. So that can be done using the library manager. So in library manager, I have micro E libraries. Select this plus button. You can find system libraries. In system libraries, you can find different types of library. We are going to use LCD library. So for LCD library, I am going to enable this LCD library. So in this LCD library, you can find all the functions here. LCD underscore character, LCD underscore character, underscore CP, command. So we are using command, out and init. So these three functions we are using in our program. So we add these libraries to our program. So what we are doing here in this program, it's a very simple program. We first display pick micro in the first row. Second row, we put programming. The display will be on for some 2 seconds, then it will go to, it will get erased. Then I am going to put embedded C in the first row, LCD interface in the second row and then we start shifting this display content towards left by 8 times and then towards right by 8 times. So and this continues since it is in a while. So now let us save this file, build the project. So there are no errors, so our X file might be created, 
So we will go and visualize the X file. We can go and see the X file. Pick micro C. So LCD interface, you can see here an X file. Let us open this file. You can see this is the hexadecimal file generated from our embedded C program. So this file only we are going to dump it onto our microcontroller. So now let us go to the Proteus environment. Right click on the microcontroller IC, edit properties, select the program file. So we need to select the LCD. So go to micro C, LCD X file is selected, open. Processor frequency is 10 megahertz, which you have set in the circuit, press OK. So two things we are doing here. One is importing the hexadecimal file onto the microcontroller and then we are selecting the clock frequency. Press OK. Now we have done with the importing of hexadecimal file onto our LCD. Now let us see whether our program is working properly or not. So in order to do that, we press this play button. So when I press this, you can see pick micro programming. So it will be there for some two seconds, then it will get changed. You can see embedded C, LCD interface. Now it will start shifting towards left. After shifting towards left, then it will start shifting towards right. And since it is in a while loop, it will start oscillating. So you can see now the characters are being shifted towards right. So after 8 shifts, again it will start moving towards left. So this keeps on going. So we can stop the simulation. So in this tutorial, I have discussed about on how to interface a LCD, 16 class 2 LCD with PIC 16 fa 7 microcontroller. We have also put on some text onto the LCD and we have started moving the text towards left and right. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more technical learning. Thank you.